Hello, in this demonstration I will show you how to export useful information from the Command Flood Zones SharePoint list into Microsoft Excel and then some of the possibilities with pivot tables. Okay, so a very important step is that you are on the portal using Internet Explorer. This is the browser uh, made by Microsoft that will allow you to export the information on the SharePoint page to an Excel spreadsheet. If you're using Google Chrome or some other browser, that feature will be disabled. So it's once again very important that you're using Internet Explorer when you would like to export data to an Excel spreadsheet. So from the Coop page, you have the two tabs, the Coop personnel as well as the command flood zones. For this demonstration, I'll be exporting information about uh, command personnel and, and the app applicable flood zones. Okay, so you scroll down the page and you can see the list of personnel. Presently, there are 279 entries. What you do to actually get the option to export is click somewhere within the table. Okay, so I'm not clicking on the actual name, which is a hyperlink, or any of the uh, data that's contained in a column. I'm finding a blank space somewhere, and it could be the end of a name row, as long as you're not clicking on the link itself. So by selecting that, the ribbon at the top gets updated, okay, and you'll see a tab called List Tools. So if you don't see List Tools, that means that you did not click in a valid location. Now, I'm going over to the List tab. Okay, so you see a series of options, one of them being Export to Excel. It's located within the Connect and Export section of the ribbon. I'm going to select Export to Excel, and a prompt will appear at the bottom of the screen, and I'm going to save that to my desktop. Okay, so for now, I'm going to select a location, and I'm going to save this file that ends in India, Quebec, Yankee. It's a query file for Excel. I'm going to save that to my desktop. Once it's complete, I'm going to select open or you can visit your desktop and open the file from there. Okay. That should launch Excel. Whatever version of Excel you're using should be launched. Alright, I'm going to select enable when prompted about the data connection and then because it's a query file it wants you to authenticate as you would normally do on the SharePoint portal. I'm using my email cert. If you don't see your email cert in this window, look for the more choices link and then it'll show you all the certificates that are available on your machine. So I'm going to select email cert. Okay, so the data is pulled into Excel. Uh, I'm going to expand my ribbon here so that I can see all the available choices and uh, we can go ahead and look at some of the columns okay you may see additional columns that were not visible on the SharePoint portal like for instance this link for the icon instead of showing the graphic icon it's showing you the actual web address where that icon is located so we don't actually need this column so I'm gonna select that right click on it and hit delete alright so I've got the code I'm going to scroll across here, personnel, flood zone, coop, um, coop member, modified and modified by, and then the item type and the path, uh, these columns, you may not have any use for them as well in the work that we're about to do, so feel free to delete those if you'd like. One thing to point out, when we open this file, it was a query file, so if we go to the data and you look at queries and connections you'll see that there an actual uh, query still exists you can choose to delete this if you were going to use this file one time and um, delete it or one time use you could feel free to right click on this data connection and hit delete but if you wanted the data to refresh dynamically anytime you use this file you can keep that data connection 
Uh, it's just that when you open the file, it may ask you to authenticate. The plus behind that is that you'll always have the latest data that's associated with that SharePoint list. So it's really up to you. I'm going to go ahead and remove it because I don't want to be prompted during this demo to authenticate again, so it's fine. That means that now I just have a raw data file that is not going to update. Okay, I'm going to close my queries and connections. Okay, so I've got a table already formatted where Excel knows that this is a table because you can you know that by uh, seeing the table tools here. That means that Excel recognizes this as a table. So if I wanted to, to demonstrate that, I could click on total row. And now at the bottom, I can do things like uh, I can do pre-filled uh, in Excel formulas. Like if I wanted to know the count of personnel, I just select that. Okay. Um, great. I'm going to sh format this just a little bit so that I can uh, look at it more comfortably. I'm also going to hide all my columns that I'm not going to use. I'm going to hide those. And also at the very bottom, I don't need these additional rows. So I'm going to select all of those. The shortcut for that, by the way, is Control Shift Down Arrow. That would, that's going to select all of the rows beneath whatever you have highlighted. Alternatively, if I selected a, a column and I hit Control, I hold Control Shift right arrow that will select every possible column that's in the uh, spreadsheet as well. Just a quick shortcut. Okay, so I have my data and you're probably wondering, okay, well, what do you want to do? So what if I wanted to see, you know, okay, how many personnel in my command have a certain flood zone? Yeah, you could go ahead and you could just sort it A to Z and then, and then count, right? How many folks are in flood zone A? You could highlight them all as I'm doing right now and then Excel will tell me here there are 58 okay but what if uh, you had many flood zones or you had you had many more hundreds of personnel we're gonna let the power of pivot tables uh, do the work for us okay so I'm just gonna sort it again by code so that everything's out of order as far as the flood zones and we're gonna insert a pivot table okay creates a new sheet I'm going to call this sheet my pivot table. And one thing I like to do is save. So I'm going to save this spreadsheet. And we'll call it Flood Zones. Okay, so we're at the pivot table screen. And uh, this is a good opportunity to uh, demonstrate the power of pivot tables. Um, what fields do do we really care about here so I mentioned flood zones earlier so let's in my pivot table fields here are all the available columns that we can pivot so we're concerned about the flood zones so I'm gonna take that and I'm gonna drag it down to my rows okay that's gonna put all the different types of flood zones in their own rows it's not going to repeat so if, if members are located in flood, flood zone A if multiple members are located in flood zone A, it's not going to show me each individual instance. It's only going to show me that there is somewhere in my data a flood zone A. So to demonstrate that, I'll just drag that field into the rows. And you can now see that the uh, table has detected these types of entries within my data group. There's a flood zone A for or Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, Delta, Echo, and then not applicable and unknown. Okay, great. Uh, but that data by itself, we already knew that, right? We kind of knew that these, uh, this bit of data was in our table. So I want the count. I want to know how many people in my command are within these flood zones. So once again, I'm going to take the flood zone and I'm going to drag it over to the values. Okay, so the value section is what actually counts uh, the number of records. Okay, so I have my data now containing the rows, which show the flood zone, and the values, the count of the flood zone. So I now know that in Alpha, there are 58, Bravo, 64, Charlie, 82, and so forth. Okay, uh, let's, uh, I'm going to make this formatted a certain way. So I'm going to select somewhere in my pivot table, and I'm going to go to the design, 
and I'm going to check banded rows. I want it to help me just for readability. I want it to see. And then quickly, what if I wanted to graph that? What if I want to make a dashboard that kind of shows this to, uh, you know, the end head? Like, okay, sir, and or ma'am, in in this particular uh, code, there's this many personnel affected. So you could go into your pivot table once again, and using the insert tab, uh, you'll see a pivot chart uh, section. Okay, so you can drop down and you select pivot chart, but I'm just going to click on the main icon and then here it shows you the different types of graphs. We're going to do a bar graph and hit OK. Okay, I'll drag that up and you can see it's scattered. Okay, so there are bits of information that we don't care about. So these labels, I'm going to right click on a label and hide all the field buttons on the chart. Also the individual lines, because I see the value at the bottom. I really don't need to um, see these grid lines. So I'm going to select those with the left mouse button and hit delete on my keyboard. I'm also going to get rid of that title and also the legend because it's pretty straightforward that it's just telling me how many values pertain to each one. All right, so also the, uh, the number at the bottom, I'm going to take that away. I don't really need that. And I, for, um, visibility or the visuals I don't like how the graphs are scattered okay so let's format this graph so that it's it's a better visual to the eyes okay so right now my data is scattered I'm going to select it okay and if you right click somewhere in the pivot table you'll see a sort option so I'm going to sort from largest to smallest uh, and if my screen starts uh, changing colors here it's because I have a uh, I'm, uh, I have a feature turned on that's going to remove all the blue light so um, sorry about that but it's going to uh, show more yellow uh, from this point uh, you can see that we sorted from uh, largest to smallest but our pivot chart still doesn't look sorted that way I mean it's this would work it's fine but let's go ahead and select the actual um, axis okay and now um, you see the axis options that are here on the right okay and we can expand all of your options here so we're not going to change any of these I simply want it sorted from or actually just want it reversed because right now it's sorted from smallest to largest on the graph but I want to actually have the larger value at the top so if you look at the axis uh, position section, you'll see a little checkbox that says categories in reverse order. Simply just check that and then now you have a, uh, a chart that looks a little bit more visually pleasing. So we know the majority of members are in Charlie. Okay, so how do we get the value there? Because I, I know that the majority of the members are there, but I just want the value displayed on the actual chart. So I'm going to select one of my um, bars and this little plus button here, you click on that Okay, and it opens up these options here. Okay, so access title, chart title, data labels, data table, error bars, and so forth. Um, the one that works is data labels. I'm going to check that one. And this just happens to work out fine, but if you expanded that, you'll see that you have other choices. Center, but that's hard to read with the blue bar, inside end, inside base, outside end, data callout, and more options. We're going to use the outside end. Okay, I'm also going to shrink my bar graph down just slightly. Uh, I noticed that a lot of people they tend to just drag to resize it, right? And you and you're free to do that. But if you wanted to snap, like I want to snap to the actual grid lines that I have here, I'm going to hold down the Alt key on your keyboard and then click and drag, and now you'll see that the um, table or the chart is snapping to grid lines. So as I resize, I'm going to grab a resize handle. I'm holding the Alt key and notice that it's snapping to the grid line. Okay. Grab the right side. I'm going to bring it over to Juliet. And there you have it. Okay, so you can continue to do this. You can uh, build additional pivot, pivot tables contained within this same section. 
build pivot charts. Um, then take these pivot charts and copy them over to another tab and create your own personal dashboard. But uh, just a useful way to uh, visually present information from the flood zone SharePoint list. Hopefully uh, you found this helpful and you'll put this to use. Take care.